TLDR, you just want some top AI tips and techniques from prompt engineering expert Dave Burrs, then here are seven minutes of sound bites to spark some inspiration. If you do have the time, I urge you to go back and listen to the whole episode, as Dave has a wealth of knowledge and may well challenge how you currently think about AI innovation. Now, here's my ask of you. If you're enjoying the show, please share it with someone you know, or follow us or like us on your favorite podcast player, and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel as it helps us grow the show. Now, over to Dave. Because my job is to to go out in front of people, to work from where society is, to find the new stuff, to learn from it, so run the experiments, learn from it, and then bring back my learnings to, to people to help bring them along in the journey. So that's kind of what I see my job as being, that I'm, I'm really, I'm an explorer and experimenter, and my job is to do the hard work to learn from stuff so that I can make it far easier for other people to go down that path. In the 1820s, I started to develop the, the, the chemicals for photographic printing. Now, what happened, it was around about the 1850s, we started to get decent photographs coming out. They, they still had long exposure times. So you're, you're still, you know, in the, the 1830s, 1840s, it was still about 10 minutes exposure time. But by the time you got to the 1850s, it was getting down to maybe like a couple of minutes that people had to sit in front of a lens. And at that point, artists started to complain about photography. And it's just like the whinging we're seeing from uh, creative people right now looking at AI. And what happened was photography got really, really good by 1900. And artists at that point, up until then, had been trying to go for photorealism. So they'd actually been using lenses and mirrors and all sorts of things. So Rembrandt used mirrors to be able to project onto his canvas and trace to get really photorealistic stuff. And this was developed in Belgium in the early 1300s when there was a guild of mirror makers and painters. It was the same guild, mirror makers and painters, because it went in a frame. There was a picture in a frame. So they were using photographic materials already to become increasingly photorealistic. And then by when photography totally took over the photorealism, seeing as it was photography, artists then in 1905, we started to see fauvism and we started to see expressionism, 1905. 1907, we started to see things like modernism coming out, cubism. Then in the 1920s, we get surrealism, we get dadaism. And these were non-photographic approaches to art. And that's exactly what is going to happen now with AI. As AI starts doing some things that artists and humans thought was, was their domain, humans are going to reinvent new ways of doing it that AI cannot do. And that, to me, I think is incredibly exciting. And I, I wonder how quickly humans will pivot to whatever this new form of art that they create is. So I'm, I'm actually quite excited about the future rather than seeing it necessarily as a threat. But of course, in the meantime, there are people who will be disrupted because that's always what happens. But if you try to avoid this and stick your head in the sand, that's when you've got problems. So, so writing a prompt, it's not just one sentence and there you're done. That's what people have been doing and these people are then commenting that it's just not as creative. No, no, you just give it a crap brief. <laughs> so the create framework is the character. So tell the AI the character you want it to play, the role you want it to play. So, so you are an expert uh, marketing strategist with 25 years experience in positioning brands for the right audience. So that might be your first thing for your character. Then you've got your request. So it's what you're asking from it. I want you to give me insights about the needs and desires of this target market and what would persuade them to buy this product. So you, and you have to give it lots of information there. Then you've got E is examples. You can give it examples and you just sort of open quotes, something a bit like this in quotes, do, 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 examples. Then you've got A is adjustments. So you... It'll come back with some solution. Yeah, it will come back with something. You go, ah, that's not quite right. That's the, yeah. And you don't just then go, ah, oh, it's rubbish and sort of close the lid of your laptop and storm off. You go, right, how would I adjust that? Rewrite the prompt, put that in, say, this time, please don't <laughs> do this. Then you've got T is your type of output. Now you can get scripts, you can get it to do tables, you can get it to write code. There's some stuff that I've, I've done where you, I've got it to create mind maps for me. 
And the type there is, is I get it to write the mind map in a particular kind of code that I can then take that code and import it into a mind map software and boom, I've got the whole thing. So it will do that. And then you've got E is the extras. And these are just little things that if you add into the prompt, it supercharges it. So I collect these little things that you can add into prompts that just make things so much more powerful. So that's kind of like a framework that I've taught in the course. And it means that you're writing a paragraph, not a sentence. And it is this whole thing where you want to make sure that you're giving as much information as you would give a human. But the other side of it is most people are going about this wrong, expecting they, they, they don't understand how their own mind works. They don't understand their own processes. So they'll say, write me a blog about, uh, about the health benefits of cat food. But when we're writing a blog about that, we would do subtasks. It would be a bunch of subtasks, not one task. So we would go, right, I'm going to research this. I'm going to come up with a point of view for this. I'm going to then work out what my different ideas could potentially be. Then I'm going to write the bullet points of the content that I would want to be in there. Then I'm going to write a first draft. Then I'm going to edit that. So, so you've got all these subtasks. And the way to do it is not to try and write a prompt that does everything. It's to write prompts for each of those subtasks and to work out, is that subtask something I do? Is it something the AI does? Or is it something I do in collaboration with the AI? So create is a way of writing prompts where you are telling the AI the role that you want it to play. This is like, you are this, you are going to do this. And the MAD framework is one that I sort of developed recently was, I wanted to see if I could turn it 180 degrees and make it all about the user. So it's very simple. You've got M stands for me. So you say, this is who I am. This is my needs. This is the context round about me. Then you've got the ask. This is what I would really like you to do for me. This is what I would like. And, and then you can be very specific about saying, I, I, I'm, I'm wanting this, 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 this. You know, I'll just give bullet points of what you want from the, in, in your request. Then you've got D, and that's the delivery. So actually, this is what I want you to deliver. I want you to deliver it as a document. I want you to use markup so that it's got bold and underlines and all sorts of things. I want you to write a 150 word introduction and then give me a table that does this. You know, that's your delivery bit. But if I'm finding that, that one way doesn't work, I can try the other. So if the create framework isn't quite giving me what I want, which funnily enough, almost always does, <laughs> but I can use the, the mad framework instead to make it all about me. Here's who I am. This is what I need. I, it's kind of like opened up the way that I, what I'm expecting from the AI, my, my relationship with it. And, and that is always good. If it's causing me, the framework's causing me to think in a different way, it means that what I do with ChatGPT will lead to different results. And that's always a, a benefit. Okay, that's all for now, folks. Now here's my ask of you. Please follow this podcast on Apple or Spotify or whatever player you use. Also, please subscribe to our new Random Collisions newsletter. We really are working to build a global community of action takers, action engines of people that really care about the problems that need solving. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.